Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus, and this time we'll answer the question of whether anyone hates Mary more than any other creature. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet and on her head, a crown of twelve stars. Revelation 12, 1. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with an iron rod. And her son was taken up to God and to his throne. Revelation 12, 5 This glorious woman is shown in heaven as a sign, giving birth to an even more powerful child. What effect did this sign have on the angels? And there was a great battle in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels, and they prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. Revelation twelve seven to eight, a war began in which the dragon fought with Saint Michael the archangel and was defeated. After the sign of the woman was shown in heaven, and that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent who is called the devil and Satan. Revelation twelve nine a, this is a description then of the rebellion of the devil against God and how St. Michael cast him out of heaven because of a sign of a glorious woman giving birth to a son. Now, Satan had just seen a vision of a woman giving birth to a son, and it angered him so much that he rebelled. What do you think would be the first thing that he would go looking for? Now, the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the earth which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Why hath God commanded you that you should not eat of every tree of paradise? Genesis 3, 1. A woman. The first thing Satan does is try to tempt the first woman he sees into betraying God like he did. By itself, this tells us something. Satan was only shown a sign in heaven. No woman did him any real harm there. He did the real harm by rebelling. So he didn't rebel because of something that had been done to him, and it would have been silly to rebel just because you don't like the way a sign looks. We can safely conclude, therefore, that the sign in heaven was meant to indicate the future plans of God. What are these plans to the angels existing in a time before human beings? That a woman will be made who, unlike them, has a physical body. She is not pure spirit, so to Satan she must have seemed like an inferior creature. Yet she is treated as worthy of glory and honor, and then the greatest honor, God himself becomes one of these part bodily creatures, and rules as both God and human, and the angels are expected to serve this lower life form. The devil's pride was too great. He was so wrapped up in his own superiority that he refused to serve, and he rebelled. Knowing this future plan of God, the moment he's cast down to earth, he goes looking for some way to nip God's plan in the bud, and strikes with subtle temptation against the very first woman he sees, perhaps in the hope of putting a stop to it. But when Adam and Eve sin, they survive, and soon begin giving birth to children. God's plan continues on, as always, and Satan is punished even further. And the Lord God said to the serpent, Because thou hast done this thing, thou art cursed among all cattle and beasts of the earth. Upon thy breast shalt thou go, and earth shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. I will put enmities between thee and the woman, and thy seed and her seed, she shall crush thy head, and thou shalt lie in wait for her heel. Genesis three, fourteen to 15 The woman. Is God talking here about Eve? About women in general? Or is he talking about one specific woman? A woman that Satan has already seen. In particular, look at the phrase, She shall crush thy head, and the word enmities, which refer to a type of deep-seated, often mutual hatred. Fast forward to the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke. The angel meets with Mary, calls her full of grace, implying her freedom from sin. Because the devil is all about sinning and tempting others to sin, we can determine two things here. First, the devil has tried to tempt this woman as he tempts others, and has utterly failed. Secondly, there is no part of her that seeks sin, or anything else the devil offers. There is no common ground between Mary and Satan. They are complete opponents in all things. No two creatures could hate each other as much as Mary and Satan do. This certainly sounds like 
enmities in its purest form, but what about the prediction that she will crush his head? Well, in the Dewey Reams Bible I draw my quotes from, this is largely missed, but when Jesus is being led out to be crucified, the place of his crucifixion is called Calvary. This is taken from the Latin Codest Calvariae Locus. This phrase also translates into place of the skull. Ouch. With that in mind, back to Revelation to hear the rest of the story. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of the testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Revelation twelve eleven. However, woe to the earth and to the sea, because the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, knowing that he hath but a short time. And the dragon was angry against the woman, and went to make war with the rest of her seed, who keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation 12, 12b and 17. The devil is defeated, but is still furiously raging over his defeat, because he knows he has only a limited time to cause harm. However, the devil is not the only one who has been playing an active role since then. On December 9th, 1531, a man named Juan Diego began to have visions of a young woman. She spoke to him in Nahuatl, the Aztec tongue that was his own native language, and called herself the mother of the very true deity. This was the start of the Guadalupe apparitions, in which, among other things, she said to Juan Diego, Call me, and call my image, Santa Maria de Guadalupe. At least, Guadalupe was the word when it was translated into Spanish. But as we've seen in this very episode, sometimes a word isn't always translated well into another language. It's widely believed that the word she used in the original Aztec tongue she spoke it in was Coatlalope. Why is this important? This word literally means one who treads on snakes. And that is the kind of relationship that stands between Mary and her worst enemy, Satan. Next time, what does Mary's queenship of heaven mean for us? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.